Hello and welcome to part 3 of KCSC Physics Practical Paper. This is the third part of a series of videos that I'm releasing on this particular paper. Why am I doing that? Paper 3 carries 40% of the total marks. In this uh, practical paper, I'm looking at one section of the exam which usually gives the students a lot of problems and this is the question that involves electricity especially the connections so i will go through several issues like for instance i'm going to look at some of the problems students usually have in this particular paper now um where are we going to start from i think i will start with the with the of course the I'm going to start with the common apparatus which are used in uh, that particular section which is current electricity. Probably you have seen a piece of apparatus like this one. It is the voltmeter. The voltmeter. I want to emphasize on two things. Number one, if the voltmeter you're using has uh, more than two connections, more than two terminals, usually three terminals, Two of them will be red, one of them will be black. The next thing I want you to observe is this. There are numbers written to these red terminals here. 3 and 15. And if you check carefully on the scale, you will find there is one scale with a maximum of 3, another one with a maximum of 15. These numbers here are also reflected up there. What does that mean? It means that this is usually the common terminal. It will always be connected. But when you are measuring small amounts of voltage, maybe less than uh, to a maximum of 3 volts, then the best scale to use is the lower scale with a maximum of 3 volts. So you will connect one wire here, the other one here. You are going to leave the other terminal unconnected. But should you connect this this particular voltmeter in a circuit and you find that the pointer deflects up the scale and it goes beyond this particular point then it means you are using a very sensitive scale of the two scales the the one with a with a maximum of three volts is the most sensitive but if you find that the pointer is going beyond this particular point uh, point to the right then just change this wire so that it comes here in that case you will move over to the next scale the most common mistake students make is that they don't uh, check which terminals they have connected and even if they do and identify the correct scale when it comes to reading they usually make a mistake when it comes to reading so be very careful always observe the terminal to which you have connected the positive wire which is always connected here. I'm going to talk about that one in a moment. If you connect it here, then you're using the lower scale. Let's find out the value of the smallest division on the lower scale. Now, from here to here is one volt, and there are 10 divisions. So you divide one by 10, you get 0 0.1. So you will, the pointer moves up the scale in steps of 0 0.1 of a volt very important so if the pointer is somewhere around here that one will be 0. This 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 if the pointer is somewhere around here that one will be 1.2 if you change the scale and connect to the 15 volt terminal how much will be the value of one small division you get 5 you divide by 10 and you're going to find that it is it represents 0 0.5 0 0.5 so if the pointer is uh, here then this one will be 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 uh, 3 3.5 4 4.5 5 5.5 and so forth so remember to identify the value of the smallest division on the voltmeter so that you can record your values to at least one decimal place or one decimal point something like that uh, the other meter of course is the ammeter it is exactly the same thing but sometimes you may find that maybe the ammeter has got only two terminals here you don't have to struggle all you need to to observe is that if this is a it means 
and there is a dash below it it means this it is being used to measure direct current and it should be measured in amperes the reason why you should check on this is sometimes you may find that this one is milliamperes milliamperes or microamperes you have to be very careful let's find out the value of one small division on the scale again you get 10 divided by you get 1 divided by 10 you get 0 0.1 of an ampere it's just as simple as that with that um, ammeter the other piece of apparatus that you use is the galvanometer this one is used together with uh, maybe a potentiometer or maybe with a Wheatstone bridge. I'm going to be talking about the Wheatstone bridge uh, pretty soon. But the difference between this meter and the other meters is that uh, its pointer is exactly at the center of the scale. Sometimes it can be deflected to the left, sometimes to the right. It is usually used where you want to find the null point, the null point. I'll explain that one uh, pretty soon. Let's go ahead and we look at the potentiometer. Potentiometer, you have seen this device. And many times when these students are given this device, they usually uh, think that you can connect to any one of these terminals. No. In most cases, when you're given this device, you are meant to use it as a rheostat. A rheostat. What is a rheostat? A rheostat is a resistor whose resistance can be varied. And how do you vary the resistance? You turn this terminal either to the right or to the left. Okay? So that is how you change the resistance in the circuit. Now, when you are using it as a rheostat, which um, terminals do we connect? We usually connect either this and the middle one or the other one and the middle one so the middle one is the pointer is the is the pointer which moves along a certain wire or is the terminal which moves along the wire i'm going to use uh, uh the next is a rheostat and it is a wire mounted on, on a meter rule just to explain that point where we are talking about the contact moving about the resistance wire okay so remember when you're given this device, what are the terminals to uh, to put emphasis on? I, this and this. Or uh, this and this. The middle one is always connected. Sometimes the students connect between this and this and they wonder why the resistance is not changing in the circuit. It does not matter how much you turn it around, it doesn't change. It's because you've made a mistake. So remember that when you see this device, that is what you do. Practice on it and you will be fine. Um, the other one, of course, is a cell holder. We've seen this kind of cell holder. And usually, uh, I don't think there is any student with, these, uh, with the connections which are made here. The cell holders can be connected in series or in parallel. So this is how we connect them in parallel. When we connect cells in parallel, both the positive terminals are connected together and the negative terminals are also connected together. And you either connect, when you want to connect this battery maybe to an external circuit, you will use one of these terminals as the positive terminal and one of these other terminals on the other side as the negative terminal. But this one is connected in series. This one is the most common kind of connection which we use. And I'm sure you know how to connect these uh, cell holders in series. Again, practice on that so that your skill when it comes to this kind of connection is um, improved. Of course, we are, uh, this one will be the positive terminal. And here we always use crocodile clips, crocodile clips to do the connections here, not loose wires. So you'll find that among the wires which you are provided, there are some with crocodile clips, some do not have crocodile clips. So use the crocodile clip to either grip the wire at that point or grip this other edge over here. And you'll have connected that wire to the positive terminal of the battery. You do the same to the negative terminal. Now, here is a simple circuit. This circuit is a representation of is what I would advise you if you are connecting a circuit. In the exam, you will find that when the, a circuit is given, it is given in symbols. 
the number one thing you should do when you want to connect that particular circuit is to arrange the apparatus the way they appear in the circuit. So you'll find that there is a cell here, a dry cell, with this side being positive, this side being the negative, and there is a voltmeter across the dry cell. Then there is um, an ammeter in series with the cell, and there is a meter rule with a resistance wire mounted at the center. This is a rheostat. We have just seen the standard commercial rheostat. Now, this is one of the rheostats that we use in the, in the lab. And you can see the pointer, the central point, which I was talking about, is this one with an arrow. Here, we usually connect the jockey. Now, probably this is the kind of circuit that you've been given in the exam to connect. So you're supposed to check it very carefully. We've seen that there is a, there is a dry cell. Let me just uh, draw uh, that circuit here. Just uh, briefly, it's a very simple circuit. There is this dry cell that is the positive side of the cell. And then there is a voltmeter connected across the cell like that. There is an ammeter which is connected in series with this resistor here which actually is a variable resistor, an external resistor whose resistance can be varied. So you see the whole of this resistance here is the wire on the meter rule. The central terminal here, which is slides, is the central terminal of the actual potentiometer. Notice that even uh, this uh, wire can, uh, can be used as a potentiometer. The two terminals at the ends, this and this, and then the central terminal. I've already explained this. So this is the one which either moves to the right, increasing the resistance in the circuit, because here we've got some resistance here. And this in uh, dry cell has got some EMF, and it's got some internal resistance R, and this is the external resistance. And the relationship between EMF and internal PD and external PD will be given. You're not expected to know this theory, but it may be important to just consider it like that. Okay, like that. And then what we are measuring is the potential, is the terminal potential, which is equals to the EMF minus the internal PD. What are the physical quantities that we measure in this circuit? We measure the, the terminal potential because when this circuit, when the switch is closed, the voltmeter which is connected across the cell measures the terminal potential. But if this switch here was open, just assuming that if there was a switch here, it will be measuring the EMF. So in most cases, you'll find that there will be a switch somewhere around here that you've been given. One, maybe one part of the question will be ask, will be asking you to state the reading of the voltmeter when the switch is open without telling you what it is. And even at that particular point, you are not maybe uh, supposed to know that it represents the, the EMF of the cell. When you close the switch, the reading will give you the terminal potential, the terminal potential which is this one here. So there is a terminal potential which you're measuring and there is a current. So what you're going to do is to vary uh, the resistance of the rheostat. <clears throat> when you move it this way, you are uh, decreasing the resistance. When you move this, this way, you are increasing the resistance. So either way, this V is going to change. And then there will be some kind of graph that you can be asked to draw. Maybe the terminal potential versus the current and in that particular circuit we expect some kind of graph which looks like that 
and again i've already talked about the graph uh, this type of graph um, uh, the scale the plottings and all that the units uh, for the labeling of the axis and so forth here you will find that the y-intercept here actually gives you the em of the cell the gradient of this line which will have a negative sign is equal to minus r oh, i've forgotten something here because after moving this one to this other side of course there is this minus r here so if we were to uh, rearrange this equation uh, once again we are going to say that v is going to be equal to minus ir plus e this kind of equation is in the form of y is equals to mx plus c and you can see that's why we are saying the y intercept represents the emf while the gradient will represent the minus r because x is i while m is r and therefore the gradient which is m here will be equal to minus r of course the gradient will have a negative sign in which case this negative and that negative sign are going to cancel out and the gradient will give you the internal resistance of that particular cell this is one of the practicals that you we have done before in uh, book three uh, get some data practice on drawing that kind of graph and uh, probably when it comes to drawing this kind of graph you will be fine so let's go to the other uh, parts of this particular video and uh, maybe before i go to uh, the sections where, where we are looking at major problems with this particular kind of circuit one of the things which i'd like you to observe is that the circuit that i've just shown you uh, you will be expected to connect it this way number one arrange the apparatus given the way they appear in the circuit place a uh, start with a dry cell or start with the battery put the battery over there then just next to it you put the voltmeter just next to it on the upper side you put the voltmeter on the left hand side you are going to have the ammeter okay and then you're going to have the meter rule meter rule very close to you with the meter rule with the wire mounted on it have it very close to you like that and then the next thing is now using the wires that you've been provided remember this dry cell is put in a cell holder you will use a crocodile clip to grip that part and then the other end which is loose you will come and uh, remove that uh, uh, we call them uh, the banana terminals you will uh, remove that screw so that you can put the wire in the clockwise direction so that when you tighten the screw it's going to hold firmly on it but don't don't over tighten that screw don't over tighten that is one of the mistakes that students make they over tighten the screw in the meter on the inside starts starts working loose and very soon you have that terminal being loose and the next moment we are seeing your hand up and you're saying you're, you're, there is something wrong with the meter because when you shake the meter you can hear something that is moving like a stone inside there and uh, you know that's one of the ways in which you're going to uh, re uh, minimize the uh, those kind of uh, errors don't over tighten these screws then get another wire again you connect it here and then you come and grip this wire on the meter rule using the crocodile clip never you use loose wires here because your connections are going to be loose and you're going to see one of the problems with the loose connections then of course the other wire here it will either be a crocodile clip or a piece of apparatus we call a jockey a jockey looks like a nail and then this other end is wedge like looks like a screwdriver so the wire is connected here and you're going to use that part to tap the wire to tap on the wire as you move along it as you change its resistance that you have connected the first loop then the second loop you will go to the voltmeter of course initially just connect any two terminals across whatever across the dry the dry cell 
across any other component that is given just connect it anyhowly but in my circuit i was careful to connect the positive terminal to the the positive uh, terminal of the battery this terminal here which is also this terminal to the red terminal and of course the negative one to the neutral terminal but just in case you have made a mistake here there is something which you will observe when you switch on the circuit the pointer instead of it deflecting up the scale it will deflect in the negative direction when that happens don't panic just go to the meter and interchange those two wires you're going to interchange these two wires you bring this wire if this wire was here and this one was here that is what you're going to observe so just come here loosen this terminal just interchange them okay and you can see over here you may be doing the second connection so you will have to loosen it so if you had tightened it so much you're going to have a bit of a problem so just um, apply just enough pressure on it just enough tightening so the first thing arrange the apparatus as they appear in the circuit on the table then complete one loop and then complete another one then switch on and observe the meters number one if you don't see any deflection then it means several things either the deflection is too small for you to have seen it when you just switch on or there is a discontinuity somewhere in the circuit so the first thing that you do is to when you are switching on observe the meters very carefully so that even the slightest deflection means your circuit is okay All right but if you you are expecting a big deflection and when you switch on especially if your eyes were not centered on the scale then you don't see anything then again you start thinking that you've done something wrong just go to the switch now observe the 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 scale and switch off you'll probably see a slight movement if you see a very tiny movement it means the scale you have used is very insensitive so use a different scale or it may mean that you may have to readjust the resistances that you have in the circuit all right but just be careful to observe any slight deflection the other thing you can do if you don't observe any deflection is to ensure that all the connections you've made are firm but not too firm they are just firm ensure that that is the next thing that you do and as you do that also ensure that uh, just going from one loop to the next of course you can see even on my setup here i don't have very many wires i have very few wires and by the way when you are doing connections you'll find that some wires are short some of them are long don't just use long wires unnecessarily because when you use long wires unnecessarily you're increasing the resistance in the circuit and you don't want to do that you know resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length so when you use very long wires you will be changing the resistance in the circuit especially the resistors which are given they are comparable with the resistances of the wires you're going to have major errors over there of course observe that the voltmeter is connected across the component across the source of emf while the ammeter is connected in series with the resistor or in series with the with the battery or with the cell okay so let's look at um, some of the points i had written here how to set up a circuit arrange the apparatus as they appear in the circuit i've already mentioned that connect from one apparatus to the next until you complete a loop i've already uh, said that ensure the switch is off when connecting the apparatus this one is important you don't want to run down the battery or to run down the dry cell when you are doing your connections because you will need that voltage you will need that energy so don't unnecessarily run it down and you find that when you want to measure something it's not measuring it accurately so the point number four make each connection relatively firm already have talked about that check for any zero error in the analog scales what does that mean before you switch on check that the pointer is against the zero 
if it is not against the zero, note down the zero error if it is positive. If it's negative, it may not be possible to know how much it is unless there are divisions on the negative side of the zero mark. So in this case, there is a zero adjustment knob on any analog meter. This knob here, the center, this one here. You can just use your nail or, or, your, or your nail. It's, uh, it's uh, easy to turn that knob or if there is a screwdriver or anywhere you put it down there uh, you put it in that knob and then you either turn it to the right or to the left as you hold the pointer so that it can come to the zero mark so note the zero mark switch on the circuit and observe for deflections on the meters if there is no deflection do the following switch off and this time keep your eyes on each meter and switch on again Sometimes the deflection is too small since the scale being used is not sensitive or the current of voltage is too small. I've already outlined that. Uh, part B. While the switch is still on, vary the resistance in the circuit by using a rheostat or moving the jockey along the wire on the meter so that you can see whether there is any change. Okay. C. Sometimes the, meters, the meter deflects in the opposite direction and this may be difficult to detect okay that is why you need to be very careful looking at the scale as you switch on if this is the case just interchange the terminals to the affected meter that is if you observe that the pointer is deflecting in the opposite direction or off the scale in the negative direction uh, what do you need to do? You just go to the affected meter, interchange the terminals. Don't go and interchange the terminals of the battery. Because if you do that, the meter, the second meter which is deflecting correctly is going to deflect in the wrong direction while you, cor you have corrected the one which was previously giving you a problem. So the easiest one to do is to go to the affected meter, interchange the terminals to that particular meter. But don't interchange the terminals of the battery. Uh, D, check the circuit um, for correct connection. If it is uh, not uh, connected correctly, check it. Once you've gone all this and you still don't see any deflection, it's time now to, to notify the supervisor who will come and assist you in the connection. Uh, let's look at point number eight. Once the meters... Once the meters deflect, then switch off again and read the instructions step by step as you record the readings. You know, sometimes when you are reading the, the instructions on the question paper, you want to conserve the energy of the battery. That is why you want to switch it off. Number nine, ensure you are using the correct scale and have determined the value of one small division on the scale. I have already outlined that point. Record any measurements made as soon as you make them. And of course, don't forget to state the units unless it is in a table. If it is in a table, it's only numbers which you will be recording. And of course, don't forget to write carefully. Write carefully. I have to emphasize this one all the time. I've been marking students' work both uh, in school and I can see that... Uh, I normally have difficulties with the students whose handwriting is not clear. You can just imagine if you repeat that kind of thing in the exam. Uh, the, the markers don't know you, so they will not have any patience with anything which they read and it's not clear. It is your responsibility to make it easy for them to read what you've written down. Don't allow them to guess. They are not even allowed to guess. If they can't be able to tell what you've written down, it's automatically wrong. And remember, and you don't get these scripts back for you to launch a complaint or something like that. So why should you go to that length just because you are writing carelessly? Write carefully. Print your letters so that the words are clear, so that the examiner can be, be able to go through your work very, very easily and not miss anything because they are struggling to find out what you've written down. I cannot overemphasize that, that point. It's so important. 
practice writing carefully. Use a pen that uh, produces a lot of ink. Don't write faintly. If you're drawing a graph, make sure that the pencil you, you use has got intense dark color. Don't use uh, pencils with uh, those some of those hard pencils with, which are very faint. Nobody will be able to see uh, what you've written down. So that brings us to the end of part three of the KCSC practical paper. If you go through all the parts, part one, part two, and part three, I'm sure there's some important things that you will learn along. You may have problems of your own when it comes to doing this practical paper. Let me know in the comments below, how did you find the video? Where do you think I, I confused you? Where do you think I clarified the points? What other issues do you have when you're doing this particular paper? Let me know because it's from what you you, you say that can help me prepare uh, for to prepare to teach you that particular concept. So until next time, when I look at uh, paper one topics, because I intend to look at paper one topics in one video, and of course paper two topics, just a general overview so that you can have the proper perspective of how the papers are usually set in both paper one and paper two. So see you very soon where I look at that particular aspect of KCSC physics examination. Bye-bye.